Hello and welcome to another Stephen Mendy's educational video. Today we are talking about the entry mode for the HP calculator family. And there are three entry modes that we are looking at. The equation that we're going to be putting in is shown. This above equation has caused my students numerous errors in exams. They can't seem to get it keyed in correctly and get the right numbers. So it's a good example to use with the calculator. And there are three ways we can put this into the calculator. We can use RPN, we can use algebraic entry mode, or we can use the equation writer application. So let's get started. If we're going to enter it in the RPN mode, we have the calculator in the RPN mode and the keystroke sequence is shown below. So go ahead if you have an RPN calculator and try it and you'll see that it's correct. For zeta value, you can enter uh, 0 0.5 or you can actually have a variable and if you do it right, you can get one keystroke for the zeta value, a single keystroke for the zeta value. But in my case, when I was entering, I just put 0 0.5. So I use that for my zeta value. Now, after we use the RPN mode, you will notice that there is no parenthesis and a no equal sign. We enter the values before the operators. So notice that we put in the zeta value and the pi before entering the multiply to multiply them together. And we have the one and the zeta value. We square it and then we do the subtract subtraction. And then we do the square root of the total. So RPN accumulates our intermediate answers on the stack. And by the time that we press the by the time that we press the square root key, we have got the whole thing accumulated in that uh, first line on the stack. That gives us a square root. And when we press the divide key, it divides the top, which is in the stack level above, by what we have done, our square root. So by accumulating the entries in the first and second stack levels, notice that when we push the one enter and the zeta value we created, that enter key created another level on the stack. And then finally, when we have our completed formula on the stack, we have to use that uh, evaluation to a number key at the end because the pi has not been evaluated at that point in time. When we enter pi, it enters it as a symbol, not as a, a decimal number. So we always use that arrow to number key at the end there in order to give us our final answer as a decimal value in all of our examples. Okay, so RPN has the minimum number of keystrokes overall and I have found that to be true in years of using it. RPN is best go out and buy your HP calculator today. If you have one already, you already know that RPN is best. Okay, now we can use the equation writer application. We press the EQW to start it up and we key in as shown. Now what's significant about the equation writer is the use of those right arrows. Notice we have two right arrows following the pi sign. The right arrows continue to select sub-expressions on which the next operator is actually applied. So we press two right arrows there to highlight so that the when the divide is pressed, it operates on the entire numerator. So that also is a fairly compact method of entry and um, it has the advantage, I suppose, that you can save it as a completed expression for future evaluation. So the advantage that the equation writer will have over 
the RPN entry mode is that first of all, it will render your expression in textbook format. So the expression will actually look like how you write it mathematically. And secondly, when we press the enter key, it puts the entire expression onto the stack so we could actually save it. And this would be useful if we plan to do repeated calculations using this formula. If we're only just doing this once in an exam and done with it, then the RPN mode would be the fastest. But if we want to save the entire expression so that we can evaluate it for different values of zeta, we have a lot of it to use, then we will use the equation writer. And once again, to get all the answers together the same, we, ex we evaluate the uh, first level of the stack using the number operator at the very end. Finally, we are going to use algebraic entry mode, which is the same entry mode that all calculators use, all the other brands of calculators. So all other calculator brands use this mode. That seems to be the standard thing with uh, scientific calculators. And when we're using this mode in the HP, we start with this single tick mark. Actually, when you press that tick mark key, it creates two tick marks and whatever you type goes between it. So it actually saves remembering to have a put a closing tick mark. And whatever is complain contained between the tick marks is your algebraic expression. So as you type now, you find that when you type the uh, exponential key there, instead of um, evaluating or doing it the way it would do in RPN, it now simply enters the character and it also puts in the brackets. So we even, in, in the HP, we even have an advantage over other calculators. We do not have to enter all the parentheses. These keys help us by putting in the parentheses for us. And when we get down here, we have one parenthesis key, which I've circled in green, that enters a pair of parentheses. So you don't have to remember to put the closing parenthesis as a separate keystroke. But we need one, um, one extra parenthesis key here for this particular expression. And uh, when, we, when we enter the x squared key, that actually puts in our parenthesis there for that. So we, we don't have as many parentheses even on the HP calculator as you might have on other brands of calculator. And at the end, we can press enter to save it to the stack. And so once again, we can save our expression as a variable for continuous use. Um, and of course, we close off with our number evaluation because of the fact that it contains pi. And we have to evaluate it um, out to get it to get it as a digital number. Okay. So how, does the, how do these various three entry methods stack up? Well, just counting what I have written there, we have an equal tie on the RPN and the equation writer, and we only have one more keystroke for the algebraic. So that's a summary of the keystrokes. But this is not the total picture, because in some cases, you've had to use the right shift or the left shift key. For example, to get the EX key, which is shown as a little square block there, you actually have to use the shift key because it's a shifted key. So when we take into account all the right and left shifting we need to do to access these functions, we see that the true picture is 22 on the RPN, 23 on the equation writer, and 24 on the algebraic. No matter what you're doing with the calculator, it's going to be hard to find any real-world example that the algebraic has less keystrokes. So that uh, makes a case for why you need to go out and get an HP calculator today. And if you already have one, you're rejoicing in the fact that I'm showing you how to do everything with it, that you, uh, things you might not have used before. So thanks for watching. Uh, we want to keep them short. See you in the next HP Calculator video.